In this paper, we propose coded rolling shutter for flexible space-time sampling. Most CMOS image sensors use rolling shutter, in which rows of pixels are sequentially exposed to light and are read out from top to bottom. The exposure time is fixed, while the readout timings are linearly shifted. Rolling shutter is often considered to be a disadvantage to image quality because it introduces skew for moving objects. In this paper, we show that by controlling the readout timings and the exposures for different rows, rolling shutter can be very useful for computational photography. Both controls can be readily implemented within the control unit of CMOS image sensors. We are currently developing the prototype chip. Meanwhile, in this paper, we focus on demonstrating the benefits of coded rolling shutter with simulations on real images. In the first part, we show how to use coded readout to better sample the time dimension. Our first application is high-speed photography, where we simply trade off the vertical image resolution for higher frame rate. We propose two coding schemes. For interlaced readout coding, the readout time for one frame is uniformly divided into k sub-images. These sub-images have less skew than conventional rolling shutter. For staggered readout coding, we reverse the order of readout within every k rows. The skew in these k sub-images remains the same, but the time lag between two consecutive sub-images is very small. This is useful for ultra-high speed photography. Here is an example. The top image is taken with conventional rolling shutter. The bottom image is taken with interlaced readout. From this single input image, eight sub-images are extracted, which capture the event of running. Here is the image taken with staggered readout. And here is the output. As shown, it captures the precise moment the foot touches the ground. We show two more examples. This is the result of interlaced readout for a water balloon bursting. As expected, the skew is greatly reduced. This is the result of staggered readout, showing a smooth motion within a short period of time. Here is the result of interlaced readout for a dragonfly taking off. This is the result of staggered readout. In addition to high-speed photography, coded readout can also be used to estimate optical flow from the sub-images. The estimated optical flow can be used either to recover slow motion with interpolation, or to generate a skew-free image, or to remove motion blur due to camera shake. Here is an example for the recovery of slow motion. This is the input image. This is the estimated optical flow. Here is the output video showing the slow motion of running. Here is another example. This is the input image. This is the output video. This example shows the use of optical flow for skew compensation. This is the estimated optical flow. Here is the image taken with conventional rolling shutter. Here is the output skew-free image. Here is another example. This is the optical flow. Here is the image taken with conventional rolling shutter. Here is the output skew-free image. The optical flow can also be used to remove motion blur caused by camera shake. Here is the input blur image with interlaced readout. Here is the output deblurred image. Here is another example. This is the input blur image. Here is the output deblurred image. In the second part, we show that if both the exposure and the readout are controllable for each row, they can be used to capture high dynamic images with a single shot. Our first application is adaptive row-wise auto exposure. It finds optimal exposures for each row and thus it is more flexible than existing auto exposure methods. Here is the workflow. From the first shot, which is often an image taken with conventional auto exposure, our method estimates row-wise optimal exposures and takes the second shot, which is then normalized to generate the final output image. Here is a comparison. This is the image taken with conventional auto exposure. Here is the output of row-wise auto exposure with much less noise and saturation. Here is another example. The left shows the row-wise exposure. The right shows the input image. Here is the image taken with conventional auto exposure. Notice the saturation of the sky and the noise in the dark regions. Here is the output of row wise auto exposure. In the second application, our goal is not only to extend dynamic range, but also to remove motion blur caused by camera shake. Here is the coding pattern. 
We use staggered readout to divide the input image into three sub-images with three different exposures. We call them 1T, 2T, and 8T images. The three exposures are used to extend the dynamic range, while the 1T and 2T images are used to estimate camera shake and remove motion blur. Here is an example. This is the input image. Here is the image composed from the 1T and 8T sub-images. The top half is from the 1T image and the bottom half is from the 8T image. As shown on the right side, as expected, the 1T image has a lot of noise because of its short exposure, while the 8T image has saturation and motion blur. This is the output of our algorithm. On the right, we show the comparison with the 1T and 8T images in different regions. As we can see, the output image not only captures a large dynamic range with much less noise and saturation, it is also much sharper. Here is another example. Here are the 1T and 8T sub-images. Here is the output image. We notice that the vertical image resolution in the output image is much higher than that of the two sub-images. This is because the output image is merged from the three sub-images, which have used all the rows of CMOS pixel array in full resolution. Here is another example. Here are the 1T and 8T sub-images. Here is the output image. Again, the output image is of higher quality, with a wider dynamic range and more details of the scene. In the third part, we show that it is possible to use coded rolling shutter to recover the space-time volume from a single image using compressive sensing. In this application, both the readout and exposure for each row are set randomly. Each pixel in the input image corresponds to a line integral measurement of its appearance over time. By controlling the coding patterns and trading off vertical image resolution, it is possible to recover the space-time volume, or in other words, the skew-free video, from a single image. Please refer to the paper for details. Here are some preliminary results. On the left is the random coding pattern, and on the right is the input image. Here is an image captured with conventional rolling shutter, which has a very large amount of skew. Here is the output skew-free video. Although the skew is removed, there are still many flickering artifacts in the output video. Removing these artifacts will be the subject of future research. In summary, in this paper we proposed coded rolling shutter for CMOS image sensors. We have demonstrated how to use coded readout for high-speed photography and optical flow-based applications, and how to use coded exposure and readout for practical high dynamic range imaging. We also present some preliminary results for recovering space-time volume from a single image.